Good day to all the wonderful people of my second home, Portugal. I bring greetings from a rather cold Cape Town, but I bring it with a warm heart. My heart is very warm with, and I, and I want to give you the assurance that although I cannot be with you in person today, I am with you in spirit and indeed with the spirit of Ubuntu. So I greet you. It's wonderful to be among educators and people with a passion for education. I deeply believe that it is through education that we can change the world. I believe it is through education that we can make the world a better place for all to live in. But I'd also, you will agree, education is not the only way to change the world, but it is a, one of the most important ways, and it's in your hands today. It certainly is the case that schooling as we know it has been fundamentally changed by the advent of COVID-19. There has been massive disruption of learning, affecting nearly 2 billion learners in more than 190 uh, countries. And no border or no boundary or no socioeconomic status can stop the spread of COVID-19. The approach to education has also changed because of COVID. Now there's a greater reliance on technology, such as online learning, but also it comes with the danger that we could see the new approach to education making it easier for simply transmitting knowledge rather than engage in learning. But I want to speak about the broader issue. And that is, although many features of education have changed through COVID and other things, the fundamental question still remains and this question we have to face about education all over the world. And the question that I put is, what kind, what kind of people do we want to see coming out of our schooling system as the citizens of a transformed and admirable society? And, I, and, and we cannot just be satisfied if we answer, oh, we want learners who are literate and numerate and multi-skilled. Yes, of course, that is true. But we need to go beyond that. We cannot only stop there. We need to agree that we need to, to, to have learners who are also compassionate who are also environmentally respectful, who are also able to participate in society as caring and active citizens with a critical perspective and confident. And I think Ubuntu holds a promise to bring such an ethos to our schools. Not only where I live in South Africa, but in, in Portugal and in other parts of the world. We have to ask the follow-up question. What kind of teacher, and indeed, what kind of curriculum and educational ethos will be needed in order to produce such people? In short, in the spirit of Ubuntu, we want teachers who, number one, choose to care. To me, I put that as number one. In the spirit of Ubuntu, 
You choose to care. You can choose many things. But an Ubuntu teacher will always choose to care. Secondly, we need teachers who can build and strengthen the learning community of teachers. So they are bridge builders who aim to make the learning community of teachers a community network. And they therefore are community network builders. And they are seed carriers of a new culture. Thirdly, we need teachers who have a deep understanding of effective learning and therefore can create better learning opportunities for the students in their class. And finally, and I always believe that, certainly for myself as a mathematics teacher, we need to go beyond telling and explaining, even demonstrating, but we need to inspire our learners, inspire them with a new vision, inspire them with a new cause and a new reason to learn. So I want to say there's something that I'm sure you will agree. We, we need teachers with agency. And agency is a capacity to take purposeful act, initiative. And that's the opposite of helplessness. We need teachers with high levels of agency. And when you have high levels of agency, you do not respond passively to your circumstances, whether it is brought about by COVID or anything else. You tend to seek meaning and act with purpose to achieve the conditions you desire in your own and others' lives. So COVID-19 has brought many challenges, but I believe that teacher agency will confront that. And teacher agency is not something that teachers have, but something that they do. Agency is about teachers actively contributing to the shaping of their work and its conditions. And so confronting the challenge of COVID and living into its opportunities is what an Ubuntu teacher will do. Teacher agency, lastly, is the capacity of teachers then, in summary, to act purposefully and constructively to direct their professional growth and contribute to their growth and the growth of their colleagues. And I just also would like to say that there's enduring moral purpose of schooling. And that is, it must make a difference in the lives of learners and to help them build a society that is made up of individuals who can function together in a new ethic. We must not only focus on this as an outcome, but as a means to such an outcome. So our students should be helped to acquire the skills, the values, the attitudes that will allow them to travel with a richer perspective from which to view the world and others and to act on that world in the interest of others. So why do we have school? The UNESCO book, The Treasure Within, mentions four reasons. Number one, we go to school to learn to know, but it is not just about pursuing knowledge for the sake of knowledge, but to get to know ourselves and others, and our world in a deeper way, in a meaningful way, learning to know, learning to know the world, but also ourselves and learning others, to know about others. Secondly, learning to do. This means more than acquiring an occupational skill, but indeed to acquire the competence to deal with many complex situations, whether it be COVID, or any other complex situation in the real world. We learn to do. We are a community of practice that learns through doing always, whether we are learners or teachers. Thirdly, and this is very important, in a world 
that brought new language in a, in a COVID world, that brought a language of isolation, of social distance, as important as it is, of um, no, distance away from interacting with each other. Learning to live with others means that we're learning to live together in a way that expresses our common unity as branches of the same tree. So even though we may be socially distant because of COVID, we will always respect each other. We will always affirm each other. We will always support each other in a way that shows that we have learned to, to live together in a vibrant and a loving community. That is the spirit of Ubuntu. And fourthly, learning to be. You know, Archbishop Tutu is uh, one of my heroes. I, I really like uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And he always says things in, a, in such a unique way. And he says, and I quote, I want you to be all you can because that is the only way I can be all I am. That is the spirit of Ubuntu. He says, when you diminish and oppress me, you diminish and oppress yourself. In other words, Bishop Tutu is saying that my success depends on your success. And I cannot shine if you do not shine. We must see our education as a collective rather than, and, and, and it must be inclusive, rather than an individual exclusive endeavor serving selfish purposes only. Education is more than doing better than anybody. Education is doing the best I can so that you can be the best you can. Within the context of Ubuntu, any activity is about creating a better future for all. We all share in the benefit of learning together and recognizing that none of us are as smart as all of us. And so, as I come to the end, I want to say that the Ubuntu philosophy is a worldview that holds promise for many things. It holds promise for education. It holds promise for leadership. It holds promise for the way we do business because it counteracts the negative effects of hatred, of discrimination, of violence and injustice. So in a post-COVID era, let us never forget that survival those of us that have survived this period, that survival is a central concept in Ubuntu. And it presupposes that we, we've, we've arrived where we are because we shared our resources. We had mutual concern for our existence. So unlike individualistic cultures, survival in Ubuntu culture is achieved through sisterly and brotherly care and concern for each other in the light and in spite of difficulties. And this value may be expressed through open-handedness and concerns for the needs and interests of others. So survival and, and also for our learners and, and our teachers. So survival doesn't mean I just take care of myself and I run away. It means a mutual concern for our existence. Secondly, solidarity, which entails valuing, solidarity means valuing collectivity according to a community-based understanding of self. So, and that, that's not interdependence, it goes beyond that, is finding yourself in community, whatever that means. I don't have time to talk about it, but, Solidarity means I find myself within. 
others in community. Thirdly, and this is so important, compassion. I've mentioned this before, but compassion involves understanding others' dilemmas and seeking to help on account of the deep conviction of the interconnectedness of people. So although people and individuals, um, I guess, um, expressed generosity out of concern, it is very important to remind ourselves that we need sometimes to be willing to sacrifice our own self-interest and help others instead of only helping ourselves. And that's what compassion is. And lastly, and so importantly, whatever you do in the spirit of Ubuntu, it was also always to respect the dignity of others. Within Ubuntu, respect and dignity is explained as valuing the worth of others and showing deference to others and embracing their willingness to make a contribution in the classroom, irrespective of where they come from or who they are. And so as you enter into this Ubuntu Fest, I wish you well. I rejoice with you in this wonderful opportunity to think afresh of how in the post-COVID era, you will be able to, in the spirit of Ubuntu, stand together, live into the challenges in the as seeing them as opportunities going forward and feel more confident to face the post-pandemic world. Thank you very much and all the best. Bye-bye.